Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video. In today's video we actually have a video out during the international break which I imagine will mean there'll be a lot less people here paying attention to this video but for those who have clicked on it, we're here to discuss last breakdown and talk about something you've asked a lot of on the channel, especially over the last couple weeks and it's a bit of a loan review series, you know what I mean? Looking at in depth into two players who a lot of people want to know how they're getting on, what's the future Future, how do I feel about them? We're going to bring it all right here on the channel. It truly is the calm before the storm. That storm, of course, being November slash December fixtures, which are mental. So before we kind of catch our breath until it's literally Christmas time, let's inhale and discuss the two boys out on loan. Now, for the old channel legends of this channel who's watched for many, many years, you'll remember I have sat here and I've done loan review series in the past and we've spoke about every single player that was out on loan. Honestly, it used to be 25, 35, something's 40 minute videos and I thought, because of the current loanees, and I mean no disrespect to the likes of uh, Graham and Jack Hartness, Big Lewis, the keeper, I'm not being disrespectful to any of Ben Williamson, for instance, good lad, he's out there grinding and working hard, they are still, I'd consider, a bit away for first team action and impacting the first team if any of them end up doing it. So I'm thought instead of maybe sitting here and breaking every single player who's out in loan, because I believe there's about 20 players out on loan in terms of the Youth Academy, let's pull it into just first teamers and the players that everyone wants to talk about and needs an update on. And that is of course Alex Lowry and Hadji and how they're getting on and if any of them as a future. And to those who are currently joining me during the international break, if you do find yourselves enjoying the content at any time, please go hitting the like button or hitting that subscribe button. We are currently on a five, almost six week run of a thousand likes a video, which is crazy. It's the best we've ever done on the channel. If you could try and replicate that again, that would be absolutely sensational. Or if you didn't enjoy the video, then I hit it and that's completely fair on that one. I can't argue with you, with you there, but I'll argue with you during the actual players. And I think we'll start off with maybe Alex Lowry because Alex Lowry was one that you remember, I wasn't 100% happy with Lauren him out, but at least I understood it because again, he plays in a position that had a lot of depth. We just brought in the likes of Lammers as well. We then had Hadji there, we had Lawrence. We had so many options that could possibly play there. I understood why we loaned him out. Then we loaned out Hadji, and I was just confused. But trust me, we'll get into that a bit later on in the video, because right now it's actually Alex Lowry's time, and for me, the young lad, he certainly deserves his time in the sun, and deserves to be spoken about right here on this channel, because he's doing everything you could ask for, for a young lad to be loaned out from the likes of Rangers, to a team that's in the same league, and need to grow up, adapt, and become a player and really take that challenge and he's striding for me he certainly do that now he's played 15 games in all competitions in which he has two goals to his name and five assists which means it's obviously seven goal contributions in those 15 games which means he averages a goal or assist what's that just over 2.1 just 2.1 games so far in his season which is absolutely tremendous especially when you add in the amount of minutes that he's playing because the loans maybe not went the way a lot of people were going to expect and he's going to be in the starting 11 every week, he's going to be playing 90 minutes every week, that's not the way real life actually works, especially for a young laddie who again has the peaks and valleys, he play and he'll play really well, he'll dip away, he's still a young laddie learning his craft, after all, and more importantly, at the top flight, he's now learning what it takes to play week in and week out, which is drastically different than maybe when he comes in for a week, doesn't he play for four other weeks, he's fully fit, he's ready to rock and roll, then he gets to play again for Rangers, it's a different mindset and it's a different physicality to be able to play week in and week out with the physical demands that the SPFL offer. So I, he's not been starting literally every week and playing every minute available, but again, it's been a natural development and I think Hearts have handled it pretty well, especially with the couple injuries that he's unfortunately picked up during his time. But about 30 seconds ago, we obviously broke down his statistics and his stats, the assists and goals. And as I always say, the, the stat line will never tell you the full story of a player, but his numbers are very, very impressive. Again, seven goal contributions and 15 is very, very good. But a wee example of why stats didn't always tell you everything. If you look at the last game that Harps actually played, which Alex Lowry starred in, by the way, it was a 2-1-1 over Mullerwell and Alex Lowry's corner, which created the first goal for Shankland, doesn't he appear? 
in any stat sheet, but it was a good corner whipped in. But more importantly, his second contribution to the second goal was absolutely outstanding as he had a beautiful dummy to allow the ball to roll right to Shanklin, who does what Big Shanklin does, and that's put the ball into the back of the net. Again, that bit of creativity, that bit of attacking genius doesn't come up in any statistic, and that's where it's, it's sometimes unfair to look at the creative players and that, because they didn't touch the ball there, but it's that movement, it's that dummy, it's that imagination that creates the space, and the others go ahead and score. So that's just two incidences, and his time has been filled with hearts like that, and I think we're going to be looking at a Hearts fan's perspective very shortly. There's a content as well, Aaron Fraser, you know him from the SBFL show we used to do a couple years ago and everything like that. He has had really good moments filled with other moments where, again, he's learning his craft. But I've been very, very impressed with Alex Lowry's time at Hearts. Now, again, most people will know or seen it trending on Twitter and everything like that when he came on and won Kilmarnock the Cup game, scoring a fantastic goal at the death to make sure they go to the semi-final of the Cup. Now, on Instagram, he did say, I'll see you Hamden and everything like that, but obviously that never happened as they drew against Rangers, and we obviously papped Hearts hooks, which was lovely for this guy right here. But again, for Alex Lowry, despite doing the hard work and doing the mag magnificent job to get them to Hamden, he didn't get to touch the surface just yet. Again, I'm sure if his career continues to go the trajectory that it's currently going, he'd be playing in a lot more Hamden games for us but that was his biggest moment in terms of that but his overall performances have really stood out to me so I re reckon if you look at his entire time heart so far it's not being amazing we're not going to go oh my god he's 10 out of 10 this is unbelievable but he's no flop either I'd say he's a very strong 7 in my opinion if you look at how he's doing when he's getting on the park again he's had some European experience as well he started one of the games lasting around about 62 minutes whilst being substitute appearances in two other European game, so he's getting wee vital pieces and again learning what it takes to be a professional football player at the top flight of Scottish football and learning the physical demands of playing week in and week out. So and he's still no one to come into terms with and still no obviously got under his belt, but Hearts are doing a good job of putting him in the right place and slowly but surely building him to what I think will be after January. That's if he stays there, of course, we do have a recall clause in the contract, but I do feel like if he stays at Hearts, when you're seeing past January, when you're hitting February, March, April, I think that's when you'll see him playing consistent games. It's just, it's a work in progress right now for the young lad who is still just 20 years old. And you have to be very, very bitter and hateful to look at this laddie and the talent and the imagination, the creativity and say anything other than that there for a young Scotsman to be playing like that is outstanding and something to get really excited about. I mean, he's not turning 21 to next June troops and he's already playing at this level that's exciting to me and it really gets me excited about this lad's future and a Rangers shirt but again it's not all sunshines and rainbows there's had some good games some bad games but more good than bad and that's all you can ever ask for when a young 20 year old is out on loan. But don't just take my word for it, ladies and gentlemen. Nah, nah. I have reached out to Aaron, who of course follows Hearts every single game and does similar job to what I do, just nowhere near the quality. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, he says, I'd say he's been a six so far. He's shown some good signs of promise and when he's had a run of games, his quality has been clear to see. His match winning performance and goal against Kamana are undoubtedly the highlight so far. Um, he's still young, so he's obviously inconsistent at times, but given his injury problems and the tough time he's had in his personal life, that's totally understandable. Really rate him and hope that he stays for the full season. Would love us to get him on permanent, but, that, but I am well aware that won't happen. Aaron, that ain't ever ever happening. The guy's obviously going to be a Rangers player going on into the future, but it's good to see a wee bit of Hearts perspective again. One score lower than mine, I didn't read that until after it, but I still feel like maybe a seven is fair, but you've got a guy watching every single week and obviously showing his brilliance and impressing him, so there you are from the horse's mouth. That is how Alex Lowry's time is going at Hearts. Now, before we move on to our boy Hadji, I'd just love to know how you feel about that. Now you're hearing it from the Hearts end, you're hearing it from my end. Are you happy about how Alex Lowry's playing and the minutes that he's getting available again he's only played 837 minutes in total would like to see that bumped up a little bit higher but again it is a journey do you want him to stay at hearts to the end of the season and continue to have moments and continue to develop or do you think it's time to bring him home and put him in and around the 18 for us is he going to start every week that would be my only issue right now I don't think he will start him just yet because of, again the players that's available the players that's there and the rotation that's needed maybe hearts is a good place for him this season just to take that step up physicality wise and stop 
picking up these wee niggles and injuries because, again, he's not used to playing at this level week in and week out. So that's who I feel. I'd like him to stay at Hearts for the end of the season and continue to develop. What about you? Let me know down there in the comments section below. And whilst you go ahead and do that, I will get to our boy, Hadji, which has sort of became the Prince of Ibrox, if you will. And he's been the one that's been really commented and questioned in every single video. I make, how's Hadji getting on? Should we bring Hadji back in January? Is there a recall clause? As far as I know, there isn't one in January. Michael Beale didn't sign off on that one and we all know why he was loaned out. But I don't understand why the club allowed it to do that. And if you didn't agree with that statement and I do believe the club's really made a mistake loaning out Hadji, give me a couple minutes to explain myself first before jumping in saying this. I'm not saying that Hadji is the all-time great player. I know there's this sort of theme that some people think he's absolutely magnificent and then other people think he's guff. I think he's a good player, especially in Scottish football. Bay-fitted, clever as a fox in and around the attacking areas and when he's been able to play consistently, just look at what he'd done during the 55 season, his goal contribution were outstanding, over 20 goal contributions in that season. And I would argue to every single person who's watching today's video, we still haven't played him in his best natural position at Rangers. Gerard never done it, Beals never done it, Geo's never done it. And for me, we now have a manager under Claymont. And, you know, it's one of those things that, again, I didn't get lost on maybe, oh, it becomes a better player because we're not seeing him. I know what Hadji is and I know his downfalls and I know what he can bring to the table, but I would love to see him get a game or a run of games in his central position. The place that we play Lammers in right now, that position didn't exist under Michael Beale. Clements came in and put that and he's put that in in creation, having a couple of wingers there. I think if you've got wingers there, you've got a striker. That's leaving space for the likes of Hadji and that's a boy that will thrive on space. So I would personally love and I do get excited with the prospect of Hadji finally getting to play in his best natural position. And that's truly where I sit with Hadji. I love, before we make a mistake that could potentially haunt this football club, I'd like Clement to get his hands on Hadji, play him in a couple games just to see what's actually there and how it looks. Again, finally getting to play in his natural position. That would be lovely. But of course, Clement can get his hands on Hadji to see which, what is actually there because Beal decided to spit the dummy out because Hadji said this. Play. Um, I'm obviously disappointed about the situation that I am. Um, but, uh, you know, I respect um, I respect the Gaffer's decisions. That doesn't mean I agree with them, but I respect them. Um, he's the football manager of this football club. So, um, you know, I'm a simple guy. I just love football. Um, I train 100% on a daily basis. I come back from a one-year injury. Uh, they know who I am. Um, they know my history at this football club and what I did. So, um, you know, uh, I just want to play. Now, I know some people might come out and say, I really shouldn't have said this or he wanted this year on season play. And that's absolute nonsense. When you're a player of like a Hadji, right? When you've played the games, when you've done what you've done and you're the player you think you are and you've worked your ass off, they sit there on the bench against Morton and still not be given an opportunity to play. You must be absolutely sick to your stomach and it's no question. It's no wonder, sorry, he was asking questions and Michael B. We were asking it. Can you imagine what's being in the building? He came out and said what he needed to say and said the right thing and he got punished and ab abandoned to the shadow realm by Michael Beale, really cutting his nose to spite his face as he left us completely vulnerable and lack of quality. We had so much depth before the season started and then by the time the season started, because of the decisions being made, we were absolutely on our knees. But again, I've voiced my opinion on this many times and I've obviously said what I've said. I do want to see him be given an opportunity under Clement, but let's get into how he's actually playing now on loan, both at his club in Spain and obviously at the international level. And it brings me so much joy to see he's actually playing pretty damn well. Again, no 10 out of 10 or anything like that. We'll give him a rating in a couple minutes, but he's playing well, especially for his country where he just had a fantastic game for Romania. Now, some people might say, I bet Sandoria, they should be doing well. We play in the Scottish football. Have you seen the bottom six? is Scottish football troops. Like, honestly, we need to stop saying, aye, but Sandori, aye, it's this. We play in Scottish football and we play Kamarnock six times a season. He's played a total of 10 games for his club over in the top flight, a Spanish football in which he has a two goals 
and one assist to his name, which is a real surprise because when you look at some, because again, Hadji is such a global name and a global brand. There's so many accounts that literally clip and crop and highlight his entire touches and games. Film. This has been the easiest loan review I've ever had today because nearly every kick of a football, this man is recorded, edited and put elsewhere. And which is the big surprise to me is to see he's only got one assist to his name because when you watch the lad they play, when you watch the chances that he's created, when you look at the chance creation per game that he's doing, he's really been let down by his teammates and that's why I said what I said earlier on with the Lowry vid as well, stats didn't always tell you the full story on a player, especially a creative player because you can do everything you can do, right, you can do everything, you can create it, you can put it on a plate, you can do this, but if the guy in front of you is missing it, it doesn't mean nada, I mean, Alex Lowry's ridiculous dummy that he done versus Mullerwell that again created the space for Shankland to go ahead and score, if Shankland doesn't miss that, is that coming up in Lowry's stats, is anybody talking about it, no, it isn't, so that's kind of the life and death of an attacking creative player, but he's been creative, which has been good to see, and again, for his uh, international football, he's played two games, one as a substitute appearance, and and one is a start in which he has a goal and two assists, which if you chuck that all together, you have 12 games since leaving Rangers out on loan. He has three goals and he has three assists, which is very, very nice to see. And if you're paying attention, that's six goal contributions in 12, which again is averaging a goal every two games, which means our both creative players, we have loaned out to be creative and help other teams slash countries in Hadji's um, case. They're actually doing their jobs as both of them have nearly identical contributions in the games that they're actually playing. So for me as a Rangers fan, going out there and looking and seeing how they're getting on and seeing them doing so well is definitely positive. But I kind of like you say, a part of my he looking at some parts of the game and some players and they'll start 11 and say, I think Hadji is better than him. I think Alex Lowry is better than him. So, aye, both of them are certainly doing what they're asked to do and doing their jobs. It does need to be said, by the way, Hadji has also recently missed a penalty kick. I need to throw that in because I know someone will mention it. He nearly hit a carbon copy of Tavernier's penalty versus Livingston. I mean, if you look at it side by side, it is nearly, maybe it's homage for Hadji, so maybe that's extra staunch, but I uh, should have an extra goal to his name, but that's it, I think both of them are playing very well, and doing the job that Aloni does, go out there, impact the club, again, both of them's no nailed on starters, and playing every single minute, both of them have had their injury problems, both of them are building towards that, but when they get on the park, what they're doing is impacting games, as both of them, again, e either average a goal or assist one every two matches, which is sensational, and Maybe better than what we've currently got in terms of attacking positioning at Rangers. If you look at it in the stats that some of the attacking players is putting in, we've arguably loaned out our two most creative players and they're showing it. For me though, regarding Hadji's loan out of 10, I'd put it at maybe a 6, maybe just above a 5 trips. I kind of go as high as Lowry. I thought how Lowry's really impacted games and done tremendously well. Hadji's had good moments and good periods, but again, he needs more minutes in that aspect. But that is it. That is the two low knees. Now we've talked about them. Now we've talked about Alex Lowry. Now we've talked about Hadji. You don't need to shout at me, ask me to talk about them anymore. I think both of them are doing very well out on loan, and both of them have made cases for having futures in Rangers shirts. Again, it's still early on the season, still plenty of time for both of them to either shoot it up to the moon or falter away. But so far, they're doing their jobs and fighting for the Rangers' futures. What? I bet you, do you think any of them has a Rangers future? Do you think Hadji now has a Rangers future? He pretty much said goodbye to Rangers because of what happened with Beal, but Beal's been kicked at the door, thankfully. Now Clement's there. Can Clement get a tune to him? Is the future still bright for Lowry? We'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on today's video. And as always, I've been CJ92. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.